Are you ready for some more comedy? Yeah. Boy, your lives must suck. <laughs> the, bo <laughs> the book on this next act is that he can take the ball inside and hit the three-pointer. He's a six-foot-one point guard from John Hopkins University, wearing number 21, Dan Rosen. <laughs> Thank you very much. It is good to be here. Just got back from vacation with my girlfriend. I was in Jamaica. <laughs> nice tan. Anyway, tried to save some money. Flew there on one of those local airlines. That's the uh, Jamaican National Airlines. Familiar with them? Owned by the government of Jamaica. Staffed totally by Jamaica National. This is great. This is one airline that starts flying before the takeoff. <laughs> Fuck yourself in that seat to hear that real reassuring pilot's voice. Welcome. <laughs> to Jamaica, ah, uh, ma. <laughs> Today we be flying at an altitude of oh, 65 feet, ma. <laughs> if you look down on the ground, you see the thing that look like ants? They are ants, ma. We be German. <laughs> going back to see my girlfriend, actually, back home next week. Not looking forward to it. Looks like we're going to be breaking up as soon as I get back. Yeah. Well, yeah, her birthday's coming up again. The, uh... <laughs> what? Don't worry, we'll get together right after Christmas. The point is... <laughs> I don't think women want nice guys. I really don't think they do. Throughout history, nice guys never had the women. You know that? Buddha never had a girlfriend. Muhammad never had a girlfriend. Charles Nelson Riley never had a girlfriend. <laughs> Jesus Christ never had a girlfriend. Arguably the nicest guy ever never had a woman. Do you know why? I don't think a woman would ever put up with him. He's always doing stuff for other people, helping other people out. She's at home feeling neglected. He comes home late at night. Oh, Mr. Son of God decided to come home early for dinner. What a miracle. <laughs> oh, that's right, baby. Oh, 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 no, dinner's cold. Dinner's cold. Yeah, dinner's cold. Oh, and that bottle of wine you bought me? Turn back into water. Thanks, baby. <laughs> Are you going to make it up to me? Oh, where, where are we going? Are oh, we going away for the weekend? A weekend trip. Wow, I wonder where we're going. Could it be Bethlehem again? Could that be it? I hate Bethlehem. Why? Because your friends live in Bethlehem. And I hate your friends. All 12 of them. They suck. Your friends suck. Yeah. And it's going to be a fun weekend. Drink and listen to Peter, Paul, and Mary singing their frickin' songs again. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> On the other hand, the bad guys of history always had women. You know, Napoleon had a girlfriend. Genghis Khan had a whole bunch of wives. Adolf Hitler had a girlfriend. Adolf Hitler, arguably the worst guy ever, you know, right up there with Michael Bolton. He, uh... <laughs> Chris, we don't know if Hitler could sing, but the point is... You know what really sucks about Michael Bolton? Just when black people start thinking white people are cool again, Bolton shows up with another album. <laughs> or his retarded white trash cousin, Billy Ray. <laughs> Cyrus, that is. I'm a Springsteen fan. Do we have some Springsteen fans here? Some Springsteen fans? Now that man's real. You know, he's real. If you don't, even if you don't like Springsteen, you gotta give him credit. You pay 20 bucks to see Springsteen in concert, you're gonna see yourself a show. This guy plays like four and a half, five hours. Who's ever seen Springsteen in concert? Who's ever seen him? Right here? Right here? Where, where'd you see him? At the Meadowlands. How long did he play for? Four or five, something like that? Three? Now back me up on this. If Bruce just played the song, sang the song, played the music, and didn't talk at all during the show, didn't do any intros of the songs, how long would the show be? 20, 25 minutes, something like that. <laughs> you never see experience, and he tends to go on and on with these introductions of songs that never have anything to do with the actual song themselves. <laughs> what we're going to do is create a little Springsteen atmosphere. We're going to pretend we're at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Can I, Harvey, can I get the lights turned down just a little bit? Perfect. Okay, now. <laughs> we're at the Meadowlands. Springsteen at the four and a half hour mark has just left the stage after the 12 pound court. At this point, everybody be going crazy. Screaming, cheering, chanting Bruce. This be your kid. <laughs> Then all of a sudden, there's a quiet hush over the crowd. Hush. Because everyone realizes a very special Bruce Springsteen type of moment is about to happen. <laughs> In the background, the piano starts.
You know, uh, Thanksgiving's just around the corner. I remember back in 1968, me and my friend Stevie decided we were going to run away from home and go join up and go to Vietnam. Well, my dad would have my hide if he found out about me get my physical taken, so we have to go to Orange County a ways. <laughs> Doc says for the long holiday weekend coming up, we won't get the results till Monday. Kind of made for a long ride down that lonely turnpike. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next day was Thanksgiving. I think it was a Thursday. <laughs> Me and my friend Steve decided we were going to go over to my dinner, house for dinner. My mom and my sister were sitting there. We were waiting for my dad to get home from the factory. Of course, my dad didn't have any job or nothing. just kind of hung around looking for work. <laughs> dad finally came home and started to carve that turkey wide up when he suddenly stopped and looked over at me and he said, Bruce, what part of the turkey you want? <laughs> well, I guess you folks don't mean my dad don't talk too much. So I just kind of averted his stare, and I said, Dad, I'll take the leg of the turkey, if that's all right with you. Well, just then, my father picked the knife up and placed it down on the table, and as he walked out of the room and slammed the door behind him, I could have sworn I saw a tear form in the corner of his eye. <laughs> I looked over at my mom, and she was kind of bawling herself, and said, Ma, what's the matter? I said, Son, you probably didn't realize this, but the turkey leg is your daddy's favorite part of the turkey. <laughs> well, just then, it hit me that we seemed so far apart, but really, we're so close underneath. But not just fathers and sons, but mothers and daughters. Jews and Christians, blacks and whites, American League and National League. <laughs> and maybe we think about that, there'll be a little more peace on this earth come next Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, the weekend passed. <laughs> Monday came at the beginning, as she always does, don't you? About 10 in the morning, there was a phone call. Could have sworn I heard the extension get picked up downstairs. It was my doc calling from Orange County to tell me I failed a physical and I wasn't going. A couple minutes later, there was a knock on my door. It was my dad. He had the day off. <laughs> he said, son, I didn't see your breakfast. I figured you might be a little hungry, so he pulled from his back a sandwich. Turkey sandwich. <laughs> Dark meat. He <laughs> said, son, I didn't see your breakfast, and I was just thinking, uh, with all the holidays around and all, maybe I never got to say the words, and I just want you to know that Bruce, son, I love you. First time I got it, it looked my dad straight in the eye, stone cold sober. <laughs> and I said, Dad, I love you too. Now let's do a song about my car. <laughs> That's been great. My name's Dan Rosen. Thanks. Dan Rosen, the boss. Lots more ahead on Caroline Comedy Hour. Stay tuned. Many credit card rebates hold you down.